Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. There are many ways to make eyeballs in Photoshop, but I'm going to show you the techniques I found to be the best. This document is 1280 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. Call up your elliptical marquee tool and click on the center of your document as you press and hold Shift and Alt or Shift and Option and then drag out a circle. Click on your foreground color and type in 90% for brightness. Click OK and then click on the New Layer button. Press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the layer with the foreground color. Click on the FX button and choose Inner Glow. The Layer Style window will open. Make the Blend Mode Normal and click on the color box. Pick Black and press OK. Make the opacity 20% and the size 40 pixels. Click Inner Shadow. The opacity is 60%, the distance is 63 pixels, and the size is 141. Press Control or Command as you click on the layer to call up its selection. Press Select and Transform Selection. Go to a corner and press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option as you click and drag in. Press Enter or Return to accept it. Go to Select, Modify and Feather. Feather at 12 pixels. Press Control or Command H to hide the selection and call up the brush tool or press the letter B. I'm giving the brush a 35% opacity. Brush in a shadow on the lower right section of the eyeball. Press the letter X to invert the foreground and background colors. Slide the opacity to 100%. Now, with white on your brush, brush in the highlight over the top left area. Press Control or Command as you click on the eyeball to call up its selection. Click on the Adjustment Layer button and choose Solid Color. Pick a light pink. I'm typing in FFD9D9. Press and hold Alt or Option as you hover your cursor between the adjustment layer and the layer beneath it. When you see the overlapping circle symbol, click down. This creates a clipping mask which instructs the adjustment layer to only affect the one layer beneath it. Reduce the opacity to 20%. This gives the eyeball a subtle pink hue and lightens the tone slightly. Click on the eyeball to make it active and then press Control or Command to call up its selection. We're ready to make the iris. Click Select and Transform Selection. Go to a corner and reduce it down to the size you want and then press Enter or Return. Go back to Select, Modify and Feather. We'll feather it by two pixels. Let's save the selection. Go to Select and Save Selection. Let's name it Iris. To create the texture and pattern of the iris, we need to create a new layer in the shape of a perfect square. Go to File and New. We'll make it 720 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. Go to Filter, Render, and fibers. We'll choose 16 for the variance and 4 for the strength. Go back to filter, distort, and polar coordinates. Choose rectangular to polar. Call up your elliptical marquee tool and go to the top left corner, press shift and click and drag out a circle. Press Ctrl or Command plus J to cut and copy this shape and place it on its own layer. To get this image into our eyeball document, click down anywhere on it and drag it up onto the tab of the eyeball. Then with your mouse or pen still held down, drag it down onto the image and release. If this texture is located anywhere other than the top layer, just drag it to the top. Make sure it isn't a clipping mask, so if it is, hover your cursor between the two layers, press Alt or Option, and when you see the clipping mask symbol, click down. Click on the Channels tab, 
and press Control or Command as you click on the iris channel to call up the selection. Open the Layers panel and click on the Layer Mask button. Click off the chain link. This will allow us to move the iris texture independently inside the layer mask. Click on the iris texture to make it active and then press Control or Command T to call up your transform tool. Go to a corner and reduce and reposition it and then press enter or return. Change the blend mode to multiply and then press Control or Command as you click on the new layer button. This will make a layer beneath the active layer. Go to the layer mask and press Control or Command as you click on it and then press the layer mask button. Click on the empty layer to make it active. This is where we'll place the colors for our iris. You can paint in any colors you wish using the brush tool. However, I'm going to use a radial gradient. Call up your gradient tool and click on the arrow next to the gradient box. Click on the inside arrow and this will open up a list of your gradient presets. For this example, I'll choose noise samples. Click append. I'll click on this thumbnail which is called blues. Make sure the radial gradient is highlighted. Go to the center of the iris, press shift and click and drag out a horizontal line. Click on the iris texture to make it active and then click on the FX button. Choose outer glow and change the blend mode to normal. Click on the color box and pick black. Make the opacity to 90% and the size 16 pixels. Click on Inner Glow. Make the opacity 70% and the blend mode normal. Click on the color box and choose black. We'll increase the size to 32 pixels. Click on the New Layer button and then press Control or Command as you click on the layer mask to call up the selection. Go to Select and Transform Selection. We're going to make the pupil. Go to a corner and press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option as you click and drag in. Then press Enter or Return. Go to Select, Modify, and Feather. We'll feather it by one pixel. We'll fill it with black. Since black is our background color, press Control or Command plus Delete. Press Control or Command plus D to delete the selection. I'd like to lighten up the iris just a little bit. Click on the color layer to make it active and then click on the adjustment layer button. I'll choose brightness and contrast. I'll increase the brightness to 40. We're ready to add the reflections which will add a sense of realism. Click on the top layer to make it active and then click on the new layer button. Go to the iris texture layer mask and press control or command as you click to call up its selection. Click select and transform selection. Press Shift and Alt or Shift and Option as you drag it in a little bit. Then press Enter or Return. We'll fill it with white. Since white is our foreground color, press Alt or Option plus Delete. Go to Select and Transform Selection. Transform it in a bit, press Enter or Return and then press Delete. Press Control or Command as you click on this layer to call up the shape's entire selection. Press Q to make the selection into a quick mask and B to call up your brush. Make sure black is your foreground color with an opacity of 100%. Brush over the shape until you have a small arc on the upper left. Press Q again to make the quick mask back into a selection. Press Ctrl or Command plus J to cut and copy this shape and place it on its own layer. We don't need the white donut shape layer anymore, so we'll trash it. Press Ctrl or Command plus J to make a copy of the highlight. Press Ctrl or Command T to call up your transform tool and go to a corner and rotate it 180 degrees. Press Enter or Return. Click on the highlight copy and drag it to the opposite corner of the iris. Go to the Layers panel and change the Blend Mode to Overlay. Let's enlarge this effect by pressing Ctrl or Command T. Resize and reposition it until you're happy and then press Enter or Return. We're ready for the last part which is adding blood vessels. 
create a new document which is 720 by 720 with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. Go to Filter, Render, and Clouds, and back to Filter, Render, and Difference Clouds. Press Ctrl or Command L to call up your Levels window, and drag your input midtone levels to 3.46, and your input highlight to 12. Press Ctrl or Command plus J to make a copy, and then Ctrl or Command plus T to call up your Transform tool. Go to a corner, rotate it 90 degrees, and then press Enter or Return. Change the Blend Mode to Multiply, and then press Ctrl or Command E to merge the two layers together. Press Ctrl or Command I to invert the layer. Press Ctrl or Command plus J to make a copy of it, and Ctrl or Command T to call up the Transform. Rotate this 90 degrees and change the blend mode to screen. Press Ctrl or Command E to merge the two layers together. Click on the Channels tab and click on the button on the lower left. This will make a selection of all the tonal values in the image. Open the Layers panel and click on the New Layer button. Click on the foreground color and choose a dark red. I'm choosing A40505. Press Alt or Option plus Delete to fill the selection with the color. Press Ctrl or Command plus D to delete the selection. Go to Filter, Distort, and Spherize. Make it 100%. Hide the background and call up your elliptical marquee tool. Go to the top left corner, press Shift, and drag out a circle to the opposite corner. Drag it up onto the tab of the eyeball document, and then with your mouse or pen still held down, drag it down and release. Press Ctrl or Command plus T to call up your Transform tool, and resize and reposition it, then press Enter or Return. Scroll down to the layer mask of the entire eyeball, and press Ctrl or Command as you click on it, to call up its selection. Scroll back up and click on the layer mask. Call up your brush tool. Make sure its opacity is 100% and black is your foreground color. Click down a few times to hide the blood vessels from the center. Press X to reverse the foreground and background colors so white is now the foreground color and choose a smaller brush with an opacity of 30%. Now gently brush back in some blood vessels closer to the iris. Have fun experimenting with various colors for the iris and even changing the shape of the pupil to give it an alien look. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Here's looking at you.